heavyweight leather. Hey, welcome back to the workshop, guys. I've been out of town, away from home here, away from the shop for the best part of a week. Oh, you can't wait to get jewelry. Yeah. Whoever don't request. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I won. I won. Oh. <laughs> nice one. And then the morning before we left, I came down here to my utility room, flooded out with a couple inches of water. Lovely hot water tank here, decided to break open. So since we were about to leave, I just shut the water off. We uh, went without showering for the first morning. We showered at the hotel. And then as soon as we got home after, after the, the little week trip there, the supply run and whatever, I had to get a hot water tank. And then, should have been a simple install, but when the hot water tank's been sitting there a little while, CPVC pipe, was there was still a couple lines that hadn't been replaced, CPVC, and you know how brittle that stuff gets over time with a little bit of jostling and that, unhooking the old tank and putting the new one in. We had leaks to fix. I also had leaks in several of these type of fittings. If you're not familiar with these, these work with CPVC, they also work with PEX, but they're a push type, I think they call them shark bite fittings. I I don't really trust these. I have several in the house here, and I, and I use them quite a bit. They're nice because they're handy and they're quick, but I wouldn't put these inside your wall or anything like that because they start to leak so easy. I replaced multiple of them yesterday, and they're relatively new. Um, I bought this house off my father. He put in that tank less than six years ago and several of these fittings were already starting to drip leak. In my opinion, this is the ultimate these days in plumbing is PEX pipe, which has flexibility, which is nice. You can move around stuff. And then you have these real snug, you have these real snug fitting fittings like this. And you have these steel rings, you use special pliers and it crimps these rings in to, well, you've wasted your fitting. You can never, never get around it. You just gotta cut it out. But uh, just a beautiful, beautiful system. It's quick, it's painless, easy to work with, and super durable. I trust it far more than I do with those, uh, those shark bite style fittings. So it's been an eventful week or a little better to say the least, but we have running hot water again, which is a beautiful thing. Now we're almost at June month, so I'm just doing the last push here to get products ready for a shoot for the Father's Day launch. I've got some of the Father's Day launch here on the table, which I haven't shown you guys. My wife does pretty much 100% of the leather stitching now, and has taken, taken a nice job off of my plate, so that's really nice, just know. You're getting a sheath stitched by her. Oh, this is the fun part. Oh, look at that color. The oiling process darkens the leather quite a bit. So you have to die with that in mind. It comes down to experience, but you have to know what's going to happen in the later stage so that you can die appropriately so it comes down to the right spot in the end. If you originally dye it right to the darkness of brown that you want, when you go and oil it, it's going to change color quite a bit. So if color is important to you, you got to learn that skill. Okay, we're close enough to the launch to show you guys this Wednesday. These will be available. Limited, of course, a limited run. We're not doing massive production quantities, but we do have quite a few, so you'll be pleased about that. Look at that. We have a bake apple in an airbrushed leather belt sheath. Very nicely finished. 
And then I went with a bake apple. So this is a bake apple pattern. I usually do Scandi. I went with a saber grind. So this is full saber ground. Or like a medium flat. Then we have a nice deep fuller and a back swedge. A nice straight swedge all the way along. Look at those lines with that forge finish. Oh, there in that lighting right there, you can appreciate the lines. Quarter inch solid copper pins, and we did a black burlap micarta, which is just stunning. With those quarter inch pins, man, I'm really, really excited about these. The bake apple is my very best selling pattern. And people just love the simplicity of it, the size of it, the feel, it just makes good sense. I've preached for a long time that these giant knives people are using are not where the fun is at. They're, uh, they're good for very select tasks, but they're not comfortable everyday companion knives. Something like this can do pretty much anything besides, of course, baton wood longer than two inches or so. Got a roughly a three inch blade, three inch handle. Nice three finger, kinda for my hands there. Squeeze on the pinky if I get real up. But it's primarily a three finger grip knife. And it's just so, so capable. So good for, for around the camp eating your food, working trout or, or small game. What a great small game knife. I've worked, uh, worked down quarters of moose with this. Makes an awesome caping knife. It's just a fun, fun piece, and I think you'll really like it. Like I said, they're June 1st. They will be available on my website, along with some other products, along with some other knives as well that I have here. Back to work. Now that I've been home for a day or so, my father-in-law is flying in tonight. Got to go pick him up. Two hours away. Perks for living, uh, living out where I live. I got a tail light out in the truck. Twenty nineteen was sixty thousand kilometers. This is the first of any type of trouble I've had with it. There we go. Still working in there. Just here working in the shop. It was pouring outside, pouring rain out there now. I said, I think I'll get a nice shot of the rain outside the workshop for my audience. And I couldn't find my camera until I realized it was left outside on the tripod where I was filming the last pressure washing clip of the truck. And it's been soaking out there, so. these hunks of leather. Look down at your waist, look down at your denims or your dress pants and see if your leather belt stands up to this. This is heavy, heavy weight leather. Look at that. What a beautiful slab. These are nickel plated here, solid brass buckles. It's a belt to last a lot of years. There's no laminated, uh, no laminated coating on these. This is, this is pure rawhide right here. One of these is going to Australia. One is going to British Columbia. I don't, can't recall where the where the other one is going. Right now we're about to do some milling, and this is a project for another project. And that's the beautiful thing about a milling machine is that a, a friend of mine. Uh, I, I heard him say once, a milling machine is about the only machine in the world that can build itself. 
That's so true. You can do so much. Uh, of course, a lathe as well. But a milling machine allows you to do so much. And so today, we're building a tool for another project. So we'll, we'll need this for the next video, I believe, which is going to be exciting. You're going to want to come back for that. I'm not going to tell you exactly what this tool we're making is for. You'll have to guess when we're done here in just a moment. But uh, it worked it really nicely, and it's going to help us a lot. I've been experimenting with the process. I'm going to be doing something very cool, something you guys will be interested in in the next video. So we're going to watch the rest of this. Just look at how it carves this brass. It's just uh, magnificent. I've been enjoying this process, learning this new machine so much, and it's just opening up so many new capabilities. So I'm excited for, for what the future will hold because of this milling machine. So beautiful, it leaves such a beautiful finish. Brass is just perfect, and then just drilling this aluminum. Look at these strands gonna come off here. Look at that. <laughs> just an exciting process. We're tapping some holes here. We're building something very cool. Like I said, you're gonna have to guess in a minute. Write down in the comments what you think we're gonna do, and make sure you come back for the next video. And here is our little project for today. I'll cover the whole mill, exactly what we have here, all the features, the different tooling. I'll show you what it is. I got one comment uh, where I revealed that I was getting a mill. Someone asked, in seemingly snarky tone, what more can you do with this? It's just, uh, just a drill press, so <laughs> I'll show you exactly. But I think this helps, helps getting you there. We got an aluminum angle base brass weight on the bottom, which makes it heavy. Half inch brass riser here. Ooh, that's snug there now. There we go. You can see that this slides in a notch and that is slotted in there so we can adjust for height. We also have a little set screw here. You can see that protrudes into the center way here. I needed to build this device for a project we have coming up in the next video and you're not going to want to miss it. If you have some idea what this is or what we're going to use it for, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'm really happy with it. Did I need to do all this for what I'm going to do? Not exactly, but this will be a very handy little tool now on the bench here. And uh, every little project that I can that I can use this for right now, I'll take the opportunity because it's another learning opportunity. So even if something doesn't need to be done, I'll do it anyways. If I can manage the time, if I if it's not going to waste too much materials or something, this was made mostly out of scraps here, and uh, I learned a lot. I got to do a little a lot of different functions on the mill. I learned some things to do and not to do. So very good learning. Like I said, you're not gonna wanna miss the next video. So make sure you come back, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, subscribe if it's your first time here. And I hope you enjoyed this first day back in the shop since my, my little hiatus here. Have a great day.